I'm watching us. <laughs> Is it going? Yes. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Busy Bird Publishing. My name is Blaise Van Heck. And I'm Les. And this is our Wednesday morning session talking about books and publishing. We had a few technical difficulties. I have no idea how. What I blame time Facebook. I blame you, Zuckerberg. <laughs> okay, you don't take it outside, fix it. We were trying to get horizontal and it just kept whipping. So there's nothing like being on a Facebook feed and having to look at people like this. It's like being on Titanic. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was upended. But have you been on the Titanic? Yeah, I was. I was. <laughs> I'm a model. So this week, we are the, the topic of conversation is going to be about whether you should write a book or not. But first, we're going to highlight two books that we have published in the past. This one is called Obsidian, and this is by Gillian Statham. So. Is Gillian Statham or Statham? Statham, Statham. Sorry, Gillian, if Jillian I. Gillian or Gillian. Just highlight it more so, you know. Is it a highlight or highlight? Shush. <laughs> so, Jill, I'll call her Jill, um, is actually a, s a stunt person, stunt woman. I don't know if you want to be PC. Uh, and actually, uh, Jill is out doing stunt work today. But she has written a book about her life as a stunt woman. And I love this picture. I don't know if you can see this. It's an awesome um, photo. I can't, it's one of those ones that you, <laughs> It's probably got out of focus. It's one of those ones you just can't stop looking at because you try and work out how it's done. So uh, Jill has written, oh, it's a memoir really if you think about it, and it's got tons of photos in it. I'll see if I can find a page that has lots of photos. Well, it's going to be hard to see on the screen, but there's lots of photos there of Jill in action. Now. This book was actually printed late last year, but because of Christmas, uh, Jill decided that it was a bit too busy to uh, launch it. So she actually has a launch date in Sydney. So Jill is actually in Sydney. It's on Sunday the 3rd of March at 2.30 at the Five Dock RSL, that's in Sydney. Um, so uh, as we were talking about last week, this, uh, when you've got lots of photos, it's good to think about different paper stocks. So we've actually gone with white paper here. And on the it's also <laughs> useful to think about how your pictures fit onto a page. Yeah. Too many people give us landscape pictures which then don't fit on the rectangular page. Especially for the cover, a lot of people have photos that they absolutely love and then they don't fit because they're, you know, so we have to try and make them fit. So then we also have this book. This is actually um, a, was a fundraiser. Do you want to talk about this book a bit, Les? Your book. You just talked about your book. This book. It's my hand. So this is Bent Fun Thinking by Graham Cossan, who suffers from motor neurons disease. Uh, as you can see, he does have a bent thumb, which has nothing to do with the motor neurons disease. Actually, he was born with two thumbs, mm -hmm. and one was I don't know. Am I going to amputated? No, but one was like if oh, I one say, was if fully I say functioning, and one wasn't. Yeah, and the fully functioning one was the bent one. The one that wasn't fully functioning was, if I call it normal, with all these thumbs ringing and be, you know, <laughs> saying, oh, how dare you marginalise us? Yeah, what happened? Probably. Oh, so sorry to all the thumbs out there who I've marginalised. So Graham has had a blog for how long? Years. Years. Yeah, yeah. So and he's he... actually had MND for a long time. And yep. He was told he would have about 18 months. I think it's about eight or nine so years now. now. Yep. And He's had, a, he's had a very storied life, a lot of adventures, and he has an extremely lateral view on the world. Sorry, Oscar's just playing um, off camera. He's got an extremely lateral view on the world, and this book comprises a lot of his blogs. And he had, um, what, what do you have, about 10,000 followers or more? Yes. And he actually did this crowdfunding, and you can always tell how popular someone is by how quickly... They raised $10,000. Yeah, and they raised their... What was their limit? I can't remember the exact limit, but they raised it yeah, immediately. Yeah. So you can always tell how popular a project and an author is by how quickly people get into crowdfunding. And with Graham, it was done like that. Mm. And that and he was able then to quite a so he was able to publish the book as well as have quite a few funds Picture left Graham and his dog. To, to donate to MND yep. uh, for research and what have you. And Graham had a really good team around him also. Uh, a 
lot of people who supported him through the project and how the YA is with us. Uh, obviously, with his MND, he did have some you know, bad days. So he always had people who were available to help us with layout and feedback and all that sort of stuff. All right, so they're the books that we're, we've been, we wanted to talk. Actually, show them the cute little corner thing that was, that was done on the design there. Wait, is there something this one? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> so these things are called running headers. Usually they're the title of the book, maybe the title of a chapter, or maybe the author's name. Mm -hmm. And because of um, Graham's bent thumb being his motif, we have little curly running headers made. I won't mention the designer who did it, but he's really, really cool. Yeah. That's an empty seat you're pointing at. So, should you write a book? Me? Who, should, really... write, who should write a book? Why Sam should. Should, should she? Yep. Sam, are you writing a book? What are some good reasons to write a book, Les? Alright, so, are we talking about non-fiction or fiction? Anything. Alright, so, in regards to any sort of book, you might have a story you want to tell. In regards to non-fiction, you might want to speak to a readership who is interested in the particular topic you're talking about. So a really good example of that uh, when people go through things like depression, um, you know, divorces, domestic abuse, and all that sort of stuff. And you've learned all this stuff along the way and you feel like, I have all this experience and I could share this with a readership and they can learn from what I've gone through and hopefully if they learn from what I've gone through they don't have to go through the same things or they can rebound quicker. Do you think money is a good motivation to write a book? No. <laughs> I mean it's a good, it's a bonus if you make money from the book. Money is always a bonus but I've always felt you, if you're going to write a book it's because you feel you have a message that you want to share. Whether that's a memoir, or if, that, if it's a novel, whether it's a story you need to tell, or if you're a business person or a life coach and you have an expertise you want to showcase. Yeah. So that's something where people want to share their message with a greater audience. Why do you think it's not a good idea to have money as the main focus? Uh, well, for one thing, no one can guarantee that you're going to make tons of money. And this is one problem. Like, you know, with a lot of publishing, you can make money. But a lot of people come in here with that ideal that I'm going to become so rich. I have a bestseller. That's the number one thing we've heard from a lot of people. And you can just tell that they're thinking in their heads, I'm going to have a bestseller. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to buy a Porsche. I'm going to buy a house in a rich area and all that sort of stuff. And that's just totally misguided thinking. And if that's what motivates you to write, you're not writing for the truest reasons. And the truest reasons are you, should, you have a story you want to share, whether it's yeah. fiction or non-fiction, or you know, in poetry, you have something you want to share. Yeah. Oh, and it's expre an expression of yourself, yeah. isn't it? Would you say, uh, uh, you, would you say that the way people tell a story is different if they think it's about if they think they're going to make lots of money, or they're thinking trying to yeah, I think it's create a, a bestseller or whatever yeah. it is? So uh, I, don't, I don't think. If you're actually writing from a place that's not here, it, you really get a sort of callow message in your storytelling. Again, whatever sort of form of storytelling it is, it's really mercenary about the way you're writing, and it becomes contrived. And you're writing to a subterfuge in a lot of ways. I'm trying to show them that stock book. There's a memoir. I think it's a million little pieces, where the guy claimed it was a memoir about his drug abuse and all this sort of stuff. And Oprah endorsed the book. She's never endorsed my books, but she endorsed this book. <laughs> uh, and they found out later that he'd fictionalised all of it. Really? And it became a bestseller and all that sort of stuff. And um, you look at that, and I, I just imagine that guy just sat down and thought, I'm going to write, we, uh, and I'm going to write stuff that I feel is going to sell. And obviously it did sell a little bit, but when he got found out, he was condemned. The truth always comes out, doesn't it? <laughs> yep. What other, besides having a something to share, you know, some of your own wisdom, what other reasons could you write a book? What's, it, what's you know, because it is work to write a book and publish it, what other kind of reasons could you have? Uh, well, in terms of memoir, biography, that sort of stuff, it's cathartic. Mm. You know, it helps you make sense of the world, makes, helps you make sense of your experiences. I know a lot of people who've gone through uh, turmoil, mm. personal turmoil, uh, 
it helps them make sense of it. Yeah. It helps them put it in context. It helps them, you know, instead of having it all in their head, just putting it on the page. So it becomes therapeutic in a way. Definitely. I think for a lot of people too, there's a bit of a bucket list thing going on. You know, they've always loved the idea of writing. They've been working on something for 20 years sometimes. And to actually see it in print, even if they never sell a copy, uh, that's quite exciting. Would yeah. you say that's something that you come across a lot? Yeah, well, you said that whenever um, people come grab their books from here, mm. they're, they're so excited and they're so gratified that their story well, has now taken. Tears. Yeah, <laughs> it's now taken the physical form. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, as we always say, if you're thinking about writing, if you don't actually write, then you're not a writer, you're just a daydreamer. Mm. But to actually finish a book, it's a tremendous accomplishment. Mm -hmm. A lot of people talk about writing a book and this is one thing that annoys me, you go to a party or something and you tell people you're a writer and people always say, oh, I want to write a book. Yeah. And I've got an idea for a book. <laughs> um, and so, having an idea doesn't necessarily translate yeah. into something that's readable. Yeah, so for anyone who's ever finished a book, and that irrespective of you know whether the book's brilliant or done nothing or whatever the case might be, it's still a fantastic accomplishment. It's like running a marathon. You know, that you finish, you can actually say, I finished a book. And if you finish a book, you'll find that a lot of people think, what am I going to write next? Yeah. And once they've finished the book, they know that they can write a book. Yeah. So it helps them with their next one. Definitely. And each time you get better at it too. You hope. You hope so. Yeah. <laughs> what other reasons would there be perhaps someone like writing a book? Uh, well, again, it depends on what you're writing. So poets might want to share verse with the world, you know, they might want to move people. Uh, Gay Miller, who comes to our open mind night, she's got a fantastic self-deprecating sense of humour. Uh, so she really entertains and amuses and, you know, everyone who sees her loves her. Uh, yeah. and, and also those poems, while they are funny and what have you, they are actually informing you a bit into, you know, getting older, having Parkinson's, all those sorts of yep. themes that she writes a lot about. And Gay's a really good example. She came to writing a lot later in life. I think she was, I think she was what, 62 or something before she began writing. So it just shows that people who want to write probably nurture that for a lot of their lives. Yep. Uh, and some of them just come to it real late. And unfortunately, sometimes it's just because life gets in the way. Mm -hmm. uh, for women, it's tougher because they get in relationships, they have children, and then they have to put their lives, their own personal aspirations on hold because they generally become the primary caregiver. Uh, and we see that with workshops where we get, you know, women coming to us after their children have become a lot more independent. Mm -hmm. So they can write. Uh, so what was your question at the end? Was what other reasons? Oh, what other reasons? <laughs> so if you're a business person, life coach, showcase your expertise. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's great. I think we talked about this last week. You can put your methodology for whatever your particular expertise is into a book. Yeah, like and a how-to yep. kind of book. Yep. And that can go places you can't, yep. obviously, you know. You write a book and it becomes also an e-book, that can go anywhere or, in the world. Well, the good thing about you know, modern demand. technology yep. is we have print on demand and e-books and what have you, so you actually have worldwide reach yeah. when you have a book. Yep. Um, and even a print book, it doesn't have to be an e-book. Because we still know that even though e-books are huge, the printed book is still very strong. Yeah, and uh, the thing with um, life coaches, some of the books I've read are extremely helpful because, again, you're dealing with people who've gone through stuff, who've been exposed to a lot of uh, different information, which then they've assimilated and uh, expressed through their own uh, experiences. Uh, and you get a lot of people who can actually help you because you're learning something from their writing that you would never have encountered otherwise. And you know, some really good examples are, there's an author, American author, Scott Stossel, I think his name, he's wrote a book, My Age of Anxiety. Fantastic book about anxiety, how it works, and all that sort of stuff. And like, I remember reading it, this guy, from memory, is Harvard educated, he's run newspapers and all that sort of stuff. And he talks about the way his anxiety can still hit him when he goes up on stage to present. And yet he's got all of that yeah. experience, yeah. Yep. And you know, he's, he's spoken in puns of places. Uh, you know, you get Eckhart Tolle, uh, I, forgot that, I forgot the title, it just escaped me. It's one about living in the moment. The US Power or? Power. Which one? The power of now. Power of now. Yeah, that one. Yep. <laughs> so, the great thing about a book is, alright, so if you want to see someone, like a life coach for example, you might book him for, I don't know, 428 sessions over the course of a year. You buy a book, you read that over a weekend. Mm. You know, so sometimes it's just about getting a compact answer 
Uh, I know Shell who... But it's also a good way to know whether you want to work with that person yep. in that. So that's a good way of getting to know them and then go, okay, this person seems like they know what they're talking about. I want to work with them. And that's just work like, through the sort yeah. of talk, things that they talk about. And that's not just life coaching. I know Shell, she was looking at um, doing some copywriting courses and I said, why don't you just read a book or two first? And she went, oh, okay, that's a really cool <laughs> idea. So, you know, instead of doing a five hundred course, she can do, she can buy a $30 book. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, um, education, we can talk to someone one-on-one, -on -one, probably is always going to be a lot more informative, well, not a lot more, but it's going to be more informative because you have that person to go back and forth with. But a book it's a, it's a is a great start, yeah. Like a bridging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what books do. I mean, if you're a novelist, you can entertain someone, you can ennoble them. Uh, I mean, I read just as escapism. You know. well, I I find with um, fiction, you know, novels. You know, I, I was reading a book uh, about Russia, and I learned a lot about First World War in Russia yep. just through the novel. Because a lot of fiction is based in real facts. Well, if you're going to write fiction, it still needs to be true. Yep. So you can't, you know, unless it's an alternate Earth story. You know, if you're writing something set in contemporary society, it still needs to have the true mechanics of how that society functions. So you can't have people, you know, walking on ceilings and stuff like that. So you do learn a lot. I mean, I, three, four years ago, I read a Stephen King book, and he said on average, the character was thinking about going to sleep, and he, he thought, on average, it takes seven minutes to go to sleep. Does it? Yeah. To I almost, for the mind to shut down. And like, that was just a, an incidental fact in a novel. Yeah. I don't remember what novel it was, I always remember that fact. And actually, I remember a few years later, it came up as a trivia, trivial pursuit question, yeah. and I knew the answer. <laughs> So you do learn things just from you know whatever you're reading. Yeah, and you know, to, if you're reading about people's travels or anything like that, it's sort of armchair travel because for a lot of yep. us, we can't all go off and go to every country as we like. But to also, go. if you want to go somewhere, it's great that you know you find out about the place beforehand. Yeah. I mean, you went to Spain. You read some books on on Spain, the Camino, and that sort of stuff. Yeah. You find out about the customs, the culture, and all that sort of thing. So, books inform you. Mm -hmm. And they have a media as well. So who should not write a book? Oscar, where is he? Um, he chooses books. Oh, <laughs> uh, look, I think everyone has a story in them. Yeah. For me, though, if you're going to write, it's because you have a burning need to share something. Yeah. Whatever um, that something is. Uh, I think you shouldn't do it if you're not prepared to put in the work. Because yeah. Because people have this notion that, you know, it's all in their head and it's just going to pour out, which, so it, which it might, yeah, but right. it's still going to need a lot of work. It's still you know, it takes a lot of hours to sit there at your keyboard to, or handwrite, however you do it, to get the full story out, doesn't it? Yeah. Hours and hours. Well, yeah, people don't understand, um, you know, it, is, it sort of always annoys me because people think writing is just something you can sit down and do and you'll do well mm -hmm. because you have an idea. Yeah. And that's like saying, oh, well, I want to be a champion tennis player, I could just take it up right now and be better than Roger Federer <laughs> or, you know, yeah. Novak Djokovic or whatever. And it's like, no, it's a craft that takes a lot of training, mm. uh, a lot of preparation, a lot of dedication, a lot of perseverance. And, and even, you know, you might start off doing it on your own in terms of getting getting the, the structure down or whatever, but then it's good to, to bring in other people to help you improve it. Well, one of the problems I find with a lot of authors, you know, I'm going to condemn everyone now, is because everyone thinks, oh, I can write. And the thing is, when you have that idea in your head, when it's fresh, it's extremely invigorating and exhilarating, and you think, oh, this is awesome, I'm gonna write this down. And then you sit down and write, and I can guarantee you, within a couple of thousand words, it's gonna get boring, and you're gonna think, where's this going now? And you've burned off the initial inspiration, and now what you're left with is hard work, to actually, yeah. you know, finish it, or not to finish it off, to keep taking that journey. And a lot of authors fall into that trap where they think it's going to be exhilarating the whole way through. Mm. And I can't remember how big this would have been, about 70,000 words I'm guessing. That looks like it's probably about 60 or 70. Mm -hmm. um, I can guarantee that the authors didn't love their work the whole way through. No. At some point they would have fallen out of love, they would have got frustrated, they would have thought, I'm ditching this, they would have thought, this is boring, where is this going? Who wants this to is read hopeless. it? Yeah. Who, who cares? And it's, <laughs> it's like being in a relationship where you're not going to love your part partner 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. There'll be times they annoy you, they frustrate you, they bore you, where you don't want anything to do with them. Yeah. and all that sort of stuff. A book is the same, writing a book is the same. Yeah. So it's about learning to write through those periods yeah. and actually coming back to falling in love with it. Definitely. Okay, I think that 
that's enough for today. I don't know what time it is, but I think we've yabbered on enough. What time is it, Sam? <laughs> okay, so thanks for listening today. If you are interested in doing some public speaking, we have a workshop here this weekend with Claire D called Shining the Light on Your Industry or In Your Industry. And it's about yourself, you know, getting out there and speaking. That's all this weekend. So check out our website if you are interested. And if you're writing, just keep at it. There's going to be days when you absolutely hate it. Other days you're going to love it, but you just have to keep well, persevering. Don't we have a two-day workshop coming up? We have a two-day workshop. We have a two-day workshop. We do have a two-day workshop in April, 24th of April.